and here we go. Harjo is back. That's impressive. That's very impressive. <laughs> wow. Don't you sleep, yes. my friend. I'll oh, put some clothes on, for goodness sake. <laughs> I apologise to everyone. Look out. Oh, goodness. Um, here we go. So it seems like about five minutes since I hung up before. So um, I've looked at nothing. Good morning, Mike. Morning, Greg. Morning, John. Uh, good. Last night, we'll be on the support group. Um, Sunday Sessions Live was really fun. Uh, we basically actually went through the forum. What a random concept. Go through the forum and talk about some. <laughs> Right, sort of that little issue out. They're supposed to all be on mute when we start. Anyway, probably my mistake. Uh, so if you're interested in some of the forum topics last night, we spoke about weather affecting us, playing outside in the cold, freezing cold, playing taps or last post, or playing in the hot, playing in the uh, humidity um, can be really tricky. And uh, we spoke about oh, so many things. The harmonics of the pipe, size of the bell affecting pedal tones, or as I like to call them, really low notes. I introduced the term, the Windworks Trumpet Academy. That is the new name by Mystery to Mastery because it's a course. And I'm not selling the books anymore. They're part of the course, but I want people to learn. It takes time. So it's more about the psychology of the learning process, as you guys know. It's, what are we doing? Rewiring this thing. This has got a script. Morning, Janet. Uh, the conscious mind is the programmer, the script writer. And it doesn't matter what happens, as long as, uh, let me, I haven't got the key on the, on the site. It's about to be there the three prongs of the key. What does it look like? How does the system work? What does the result look like? How does the system work? Am I able to play it or is my body broken? If your body's not broken, <laughs> then everyone can play the way that they want to. And I live by that. It's a matter of going, what do we have to stop doing in order to get the results that we're after? So there is the topic of improvisation, which I'm, I feel very unqualified to talk about, but I'll talk about it from my perspective. And what I'm going to encourage is, even though it's the, the forum is there and we're talking about, especially in the support group, feel free to contact me and say, can we talk about this? If there's an issue that you're having, can we talk about this? Can we cover this? Feel free, anyone, about anything. Uh, and then I, coming into it, I'll have a little bit more structure as to topics covered this week will be blah, 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 blah. And uh, that might be helpful for you because um, I'm just making it up as we go, just trying to be here to help anyone that's having any dramas, really. So with that in mind, uh, is there any pressing issues, matters? Um, Janet, I got your email. We, we can or cannot talk about that depending entirely up to you uh any thoughts questions criticisms theories stock market tips anything that you would like to discuss anyone yeah if you want to talk about anything i shared with you that's fine janet thank you yeah uh m massive respect you're having we've discussed it in the past and you've shared with us your your good and bad experiences oh that reminds me um noted uh Hajo got you next um wind winds wind winds is a new thing that i'm going to be doing people talking about their winds what winds are they having there's some rippers on the on the uh site which is great 
because we have great days, it all clicks. Everything works. All the drills, cycle of T's, all the elements that individually we're working on, you have that moment where everything just works. Then you have the days where it all falls apart. That's why we're all here to help get through the tough times because we're all going to have them, all going to have the frustrations, all going to have the, the ups and the downs. And in fact, Mike, I'm, I'm going to um, come to you at some stage because you've had some ripper wins and your story, I think, you know, just the way that you're going about it might be of interest to, to people. Um, and for those of you that were here last week, we had a huge win and I bring this up because Michael just turned up French horn, professional French horn player. This will be interesting. See how the gig went, you know. But we had a huge moment last week. Uh, again, that's what this is all about. So win wins. Share with me. Send send me a video if you're happy to put something out there and go. I had a win this week because people need to hear it. Right. It's all about motivation and excitement. It's all about achievement. It's all about belief, understanding. We can uh, get the results that we want. I live by it. That's why we're sitting here. And Michael, welcome. I'll get to you number three. <laughs> so, Janet, would you like to share or do you want me to uh, just give a brief description of what we spoke about? I just had a uh, worst day ever yesterday at a, a POMPS concert outdoors, 90 degrees. And I also have focal dystonia. And uh, it's like I hadn't been experiencing it for several days. It was like doing the wind works and changing the embouchure had really worked. And it was like the dystonia was gone, but it was like it was all saving everything up for yesterday. And it all kicked off and then I could barely play. And I'm trying to do this concert. One of, the, of course, you know, after a two-hour concert, the last thing you want to do is some, you know, little little solo that's high range. And I hadn't been hardly able to get through anything successfully. So I got to, I'm getting towards that solo. And all I could tell myself, because everything was like gone, it was the worst day ever. So I'm getting there and getting closer and closer. And I keep telling myself, uh, tell with everything, just play the damn thing. And I did play it and it worked. And it was just the weirdest thing because it just put all this other stuff out of my mind, all the things, you know, about keeping, you know, open throat and, you know, keeping, you know, elevating the tongue for the higher range. And it came out and that was the only good part of the whole day was to survive that solo. What a, what a massive survival moment. Well done. Yeah. Congratulations. There, there are so many issues at play here, Janet. And we, we, we've only spoken a couple of times, haven't we, on privately. The, um, uh, hopefully Jules turns up at some stage, that Julie, who I'm putting the website together with on Focal Dystonia. It's, it's not gone. It's there until it's completely wired out with, with new, uh, new habits. And this is the problem with dystonia is that people think that um, I've had some good days. I've got this and it does. And this is the thing. For those of you that don't understand dystonia, don't know what it is or sitting there thinking, I don't have it. This doesn't relate to me. Yes, it does. All it is, is muscles are very obedient. They obey the instruction that they're getting from the belief system, from the from the wiring. Now, dystonia can be trauma related or perfectionist related or overuse related or it could be related to anything. At the end of the day, we've got a habit that exists and we want a new habit, right? So we're living two lives. We're living the 1.0 life in the, in the I've, heard, I've said this so many times, I'm sorry, but the building that's collapsing, but we have to live there. The plaster's falling off, the plumbing's all seized up, the electronics, well, we can't afford the power bills, you know, the, 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 the 1.0 building is collapsing. Number two is the building that we're building, the new one, the high rise luxury apartment, and you're going to live in the penthouse. But it's a building process 
and we have to live here until this is complete. Okay. Now there is a fear that if we keep maintaining to survive this one, this one's going to unbuild itself. Now, to a degree, that's true. To a small degree, that's true. There was a study done you, when the, the new MRI technology came out. This must be 15 years ago or more now. They, uh, what was the, what did they do? Juggle. They taught two test groups. One test group had a juggle. One test group not didn't teach them how to juggle, took brain scans. After three months of juggling, they could plot the neural changes in the brain of the people that juggled. And there was obviously no change in those that didn't juggle, took more scans. Then they weren't allowed to juggle for three months, not allowed to. And then they took scans again. And of course, the non-juggle group, there was, there was consistency. The people that juggled, because they hadn't done the practice, it did start to revert back. You actually, the use it or lose it thing does exist to a degree. But, excuse me, that's an extreme case of a motor skill that's quite delicate. So it's going to take a lot of RAM to do that. In our case, we're doing both. We're learning to juggle the new way and juggle the old way. Juggling gigs, there you go. That's maybe where the term came from. Um, so until the 2.0 building is completely, it's complete, we still have to live in the 1.0 and that's what, what's happening. And unfortunately the air conditioning broke down. It was 90 degrees and playing in that heat is difficult. I find it the most difficult playing in humid uh, conditions, just the thickness of the air feels like you're trying to blow socks through your trumpet, you know. Uh, so that combined with what's going on, was there any anxiety about the solo itself? Was there any sort of, or for the concert, let's leave the dystonia away for a minute, was there any performance anxiety going into the concert? Because that has been an issue in the past. Actually, there was none because of the concert. In fact, oh, since I started with Windworks, I, and some of the trampoline issues, I've decided that you know, I used to take uh, what, propen panel or indrol is what they call it for the performance anxiety. And I had decided I wasn't going to take that anymore because I wanted the adrenaline hit because I think it was actually helping. So I wasn't taking any of that yesterday. So there was no drug enhanced performance. I didn't have any anxiety related to the solo, except that because of a, I lost my uh, high range about a year ago. So getting a D over the C was not in my uh, repertoire any longer. Sure. So uh, that was the anxiety point was having to hit two of those during that solo. Yep. That was really the only anxiety. It's like, oh no, what how am I going to get those this time or not? Right. And I got them both, so I was very happy about that. So it's amazing what we can achieve when we just go right, have to get it done, shut everything out, just get it, get the job done. Yeah. Uh, it's not, as I said last night, Zen in the Art of Archery, relying on favourable conditions. We don't want to be relying on favourable conditions. Uh, and we got away with it. You got away with the solo this time, but from all accounts in your email, of course, the the message uh, the the gig itself was the most unpleasurable experience that you've possibly had um it was bad it was sun in the face and everything yep 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 so all i would say is it's it's uh, it's horrible news but I'm, I'm sure you are completely aware of it but it's it's there the biggest mistake people make with dystonia is use adaptive approaches and they practice in their room and they, they could go for a month practicing going, oh, there's no issue at all. Let's go and do a gig. And it all falls apart. The expectation changes, the environment changes, the dynamics change, everything changes. And all of a sudden, when the, the mind is in a completely different 
spot. It's taking its eye off the things that it's focusing on in the practice room. And, oh, lo and behold, dystonia turns up. And this is why I take the eradicative approach, not the adaptive, not the Botox that neurologists are telling musicians to take. That's not fixing anything. We've got to change this bit. And that's where it relates to everyone here. We've got to change the way we think about it, change the messaging. If we've got anxiety, we come into the practice room excited. How do we do that? Think about times where we loved playing. Why do we practice all the time? We love the feeling of it. Great, enjoy the feeling of it. We love the sound of it. Great, let's find a note that sounds good. It doesn't sound good. Why doesn't it sound good? Let's break it down. What doesn't sound good? I bet I could get you to play a beautiful sounding no note. <laughs> Here we go. Check it out. Oh, how did you go? I did great. <laughs> that was the greatest no note I've ever played in my life. Perfect process. Oh, well done, right? Then what comes next? Eventually, with good process, aperture corners. Uh, Mike, you need to watch last night's video about uh, aperture corners. I told a big story about Claude Gordon uh, and Milk Spout. Yeah, I won't go through it all again today because it's on the video from last night, but I suggest you watch that. If any of you here haven't watched last week's video with Mike and the articulation stuff, please do. It's extraordinary. Um, so, Janet, hang in there. Hang in there, hang in there, hang in there. We've just got to keep going around the cycle and literally starting at no notes. Chilled and develop. Develop, develop. While I think of it, but my brain is in overload at the moment, actually. To me, it's a win. As I said to you, is it a bad experience? Yes and no. But the upside is I'm going to get this done. You showed the power of the conscious mind in the heat, in the moment, and you got it done. And that's awesome, right? And we're learning how to deal with the rest of the condition. Um, of course, I just diverted and now I completely forgot what I was going to say. Right. We'll move on. Hajo, you were next. Uh, you're on, you're on, you're on Mutsky. Yeah. Yep. Hi, Craig. Yes, nice to meet you again. I'm uh, lying in my bed now. Because... What time is it over there? <laughs> it's uh, 11 in the evening. Oh, that's not so bad. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it is. Okay. Um, but I have a, a personal question. I, I would like to book a, a private uh, session with you. Where can I do it? Basically, because the way I normally I... do it, someone pays for a lesson and I get notification of the order and we just make contact and do it. So with uh, via email. Yeah. Email is the way to go. Okay. Okay. Understand. Understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. cool. And uh, a congratulation to, to Janet. It is a very good experience uh, what she made. Right. And I, I had this, the same problems. Uh, sometimes I have the same problems, but with your method, uh, I, it is easier for me to understand uh, maybe uh, anxiety in the church, for example. Yep. I had bad experience in that. I had good experience as well, but uh, I didn't understand why it's uh, someday that and why it's the other day that. That means you are you, you like to perform as best as you can. And sometimes it, it uh, was not so good. And uh, especially in the church, it is uh, very hard to understand and, and to, to work with. On the other side, um, when I, I played uh, last Sunday, uh, three hours in the sun, in the sun, there was no shelter, nothing. And uh, it was hard, but it worked. Uh, that was um, another very nice experience for me because I thought, okay, that's what it is. And I have to play. It was outside, so there was no good sound. Yeah. And I used the one person rule for me. And I felt that it becomes more and more easier to play. And the best was uh, when, when we are ready, we thought we were ready after three hours. 
the uh, manager came and said, okay, can you play one hour more? <laughs> and we did it. <laughs> so we right. played at least uh, four, four hours in the sun. Okay. It was more than 30 degrees outside. Yeah, that's, that's, that's and, hot. And it was a good experience. It worked. Right. Awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well done. Well done. I think that's, that's one of the big things that hopefully you will start finding. This is, this is everyone. That as you work through it, this is my experience. That's all I can talk from is my experience. Is whilst there were times where I'm thinking, well, my range isn't improving, but I'm enjoying playing more. It's, it's feeling easier. I noticed uh, one particular day, I did five gigs, and I'm not lying. On Sundays, I had three gigs. I was doing a big band, two sets of um, all that, uh, the, 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 what was his name? Vegas singer. Anyway, big uh, pop songs done in big band style. Um, what's his name from, from Vegas? Uh, it'll come to me. Anyway, so two big screaming sets of lead followed by a band called Big and Horny, <laughs> which does Joe Cocker, uh, Blood, Sweat and Tears, so spinning wheel solo and, mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff, uh, three sets, then three sets of Latin music uh, finishing at 1am. Then this particular day, I had a roving gig for two hours outside and we all know that the, uh, not Wayne Newton, but thank you, there's the other one. Uh, uh, when we go outside, we can't hear ourselves. Hel Gelper, piano player for some of the legend jazzers, talks about chaos. The brain, the ear wants to hear your trumpet sound and it can't hear it because of the environment. So we overexert because of the chaos. So uh, I got smart eventually and I go outside and I can't hear myself. As I've said to you guys before, if you can't hear yourself, play softer. <laughs> don't, don't damage yourself. So I had a two-hour roving gig from 10 to 12, 1 o'clock to the big band gig, finished that, another roving gig. I think it might have been the Australian Open tennis, two hours dressed in a tennis ball costume, <laughs> walking around, hey, welcome to Melbourne, you know, pick a song and we'll play, you know, it's a, 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 a trumpet, and a tuba and drums playing living on a prayer or blame it on the bossa nova just entertainment fun creating a, a, a vibe then uh off to the big and horny gig then off and did the latin gig and i got to the the third set of the latin gig and it's iracere it's heavy trumpet playing and i gone, wow i'm still playing <laughs> That was a big day. And that brings to mind the whole brass playing's no harder than deep breathing that I spoke about a lot last night. I did a big Claude Gordon chat last night. Uh, so the efficiency comes when we focus on efficiency. We repeat efficiency drills and they drip through. They have to because the brain wants to do things the easiest way. It wants to do it the most efficient way. And once it's hard to get it to change, it's hard to get it to, you know, I can already play a low C. I do it this way. I might be engaging a bit, tightening the throat, pitching the chops and pushing a bit, but that's okay. It sounds really good. So that's the way I play. So it's going to have to see a real urgency to change for it to change that habit. But then after years of getting to the middle C and all of a sudden you're playing the middle C like this and oh, I see you're playing it like this. Eventually, we start to deduce that the problem isn't the high C. It might not even be the middle C. It might not even be the low C. It's the mindset behind the whole concept of how to play the instrument, how to create sound. So that's where we start. And for those of you that are entrenched in the course, you totally understand that. That's what we're doing is changing our understanding of how the whole system works and that because of that understanding and the belief in it and the urgency to change and the desirable feeling of the new drills that we're doing play like that i can actually play like that cool 
then it feels better, it sounds better. So then there's the desire to change and we can spend the RAM to make these changes. Is it easy? No, but it works based on, like with Janet, it's the same thing. My body's not broken. It's just responding to messaging. Let's change the messaging and let's be on alert, especially in the practice room, when do things get off uh, track? That's what I was going to say before. Not next week. I've got a quite a big event this week on personal uh, life, so I'm going to be a little bit disappeared. Uh, but after this weekend, uh, some exciting things. Uh, won't go into detail, but heavy stuff with a dear friend of mine. And so not next weekend, but the weekend after, I'm going to do two sessions on the Singing Sea series. So get any questions, get any thoughts, get ready. We're going to go through it all. I'll be in the course and I'm going to go through it and, and discuss in depth based on what we're talking about here, the uh, psychology and process of the Singing Sea series, what it's all about. <sighs> Mike, have we had the gig? Yes, the gig was uh, last night and Friday night, and uh, I was really happy with how I got through it. Very awesome. happy. Well done, Mike. Had two things, one good, one bad. I'm going to start with the bad. Okay. Um, about three and a half years ago, I was playing in a brass quintet and got a little bit of a lip injury. It, I don't know if it was a dystonia, but it was you know, like a needle sensation. And um, I remember taking time off, rehabbed it, and I was fine. Um, Monday or Tuesday of this week, I felt the same needle sensation. On, and it was a weird note. It wasn't high. It wasn't loud. I was playing a C below the bass clef. And I felt that, you know, very present. It was like, ah, <laughs> not again. Uh, but I was able to get through the program this weekend without a whole lot of trouble. Um, it, it wasn't until like the end of the performance last night that I felt like a little tingle. It wasn't the sharp, sharp pain, but a little bit of tingle. And uh, I'm kind of wondering what the heck is going on? uh right me too <laughs> okay so we speculate based on experience you've been very intense on working on this stuff and lots of uh wing and if i remember rightly i can't remember whether it was you or someone else doing a lot of uh wing to the point where you thought that maybe you were doing too much i can't recall it was in the it was on the it was me. no sure are you doing more playing than normal? A little bit because my seasons are starting up again. How much did you play when the seasons were not, when you just weren't playing? I was getting in at least 30 minutes a day just to stay in shape. Okay. Okay. That's good. So, because clearly something's changed. Right. And first thing I, I generally now I'm learning about this stuff. So I'm not saying this is fact, but my understanding is that I, I never uh, put pain as, as a, an attribute of dystonia. That's not a pain okay. issue. It's if anything, it's just an overuse uh, twinge. We get twinges in our feet. We get twinges in our calf muscles or in our hands when you like your riders cramp or you get things tingles and bits i think firstly i would go the right let's just oh bit of a ping i might stop now right a bit of a twinge i did i went to do park run the other day which is five kilometers and i haven't run in a few weeks and i could tell the back of my right leg which i've had surgery on a couple of years back um was tight behind the knee. I could have kept going, but I would have done damage. And damage, a sore calf that's going to stop me from running next time. Something. I feel a bit of pain. Stop. The body's saying, because I haven't been doing it, 
and all of a sudden you're doing it, it's not ready, right? So my advice would be to not try and play through it because it's there. So whatever it is could be exacerbated with extreme playing. It's like right now, like, can you feel it now? If you were to do a, if you were to do a milk spout, bite your finger, don't let the air escape. That's not there. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think there's like damage done. There's no permanent issue, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on. If it happens, what was I doing? When was I doing it? Is there a muscle weakness? I don't know. I got, I, some of you will know this, not everyone. I got punched on boxing day of all days at a bar because a, go, a girl was being extremely abused by her boyfriend at outside this, this fence. And I hear this commotion and I've just stood up on the seat and this guy's got this girl pinned against the wall and screaming at her. I'm like, dude, mate, you have to stop that. Stop, stop doing that. And he did. What I didn't realize was that he ran through the front of the pub, past the security guys, came over to where I was and tapped me on the shoulder and turned, I turned around and he went whack. And it gave me a hematoma in the, in my top lip, which is still there. Like blood, you know, um, not blood blister. Oh, kind of is. So there's a solid bit of rock in there. Anyway, the whole muscle died and I didn't play for three months and I thought I was career over. I was told my career was over. Broken embouchure. And I kind of accepted it and then went, no, 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 no. This can't be, this isn't right. No, something's not right here. One day, walking down main road where I lived, sports injury clinic. What could go wrong? So I walked into the sports injury clinic and the guy looked up at me and I said, I'm a professional trumpet player and I've been punched and I can't play. He's like, what? And gets off the phone. He says, what did you say? I said, I'm a professional trumpet player. I got punched. I can't play. I've been told my career's over. And there's a room full of people. And he goes, come with me. <laughs> Straight into this room straight into the ultrasound thing. He goes, I'm a trombone player. <laughs> True story. He said, do you know Joe O'Callaghan? Joe was the MC at my wedding about three weeks before it. I said, yeah, I know him. Oh, he's a great mate of mine, plays trombone. So complete rebuild. And he gave me the drills to do it. it a, stretches, flapping really light for a couple of weeks second week was elect electro shock stuff you got a wet pad on your chest and you put your hand on there and it zap 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 and i had the alan border medal alan border's famous australian cricketer and it was the cricket awards international cricket awards on television i said i got this gig coming up i'd like to do it but i'd left it to the last minute because i hadn't been playing <laughs> all i could feel was this ball it's still there but now there's muscle around it and um he got me back up and I got through the gig, right? Desperation. So whether there's anything going down that path, I don't know. Um, but it's something to be aware of. And if it's a recurring thing, I would speak to somebody about it and get their advice. Do not take advice from me. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. The good thing from Tell this me weekend. The, right? Yeah. Good news. Um, the wind win. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I came up in the school of don't use pressure, don't use too much pressure. And it's like, well, how am I supposed to play? And I, I, I think I've spent most of my career just so afraid to use very much pressure. To, you know, I was, I was like pulling away. But this weekend, I decided I'm going to embrace this. I actually used a little more, not a lot. But a little more pressure and i felt like endurance was better tone was better everything was just a little bit better right that this ties into what we we're talking about last night with claude gordon herbert l clark did a demonstration one day or said something in a master class about a, a trumpet being on a string 
and just hanging there. Don't use pressure. Claude Gordon came out and said, because it went everywhere, apparently. Right. And Claude Gordon came out and said, it takes pressure to play. Don't forget that. Forget that was ever said. Write that off, you know, from the existence of trumpet education. It's not right. We need enough pressure to create a seal around, for those of you who weren't here last night, which is everyone except Harjo, we have a new term, folks. The sides of the mouth. The sides. We've got the aperture corners. We've got the sides of the mouth. They've got to be firm. Right? You've got the corners of the mouth and the sides of the mouth. Then you've got the aperture corners and the rim where the rim sits. Then you've got the aperture. So that gap between the aperture corners and the corners of the mouth, henceforth shall be known as the sides of the mouth. So you'll know <laughs> when I'm talking about the sides of the mouth, you know what it means because there's a little conjecture over the last couple of weeks about how clear I'm being with the aperture corners, right? So if you're trying to use less pressure, there is, has to be a manipulation and that's going to be in the chops to get the compression that's required to make a piece of pipe vibrate. So the body's doing too much in order to try and get the air in the pipe to vibrate. So well done. And of course it's optimum. Where, where's the optimum amount of pressure? Well, let's use the feeling of it and the sound of it. What does it feel like? What does it sound like? Oh, there's the body resonance. Right. We know that playing is no harder than humming, talking, or singing. That's what the body needs to do, as we discovered last week. Thank you again. One of the great moments. Add the horn. Does it sound the same? Is it nice and rich and resonant? Ah, uh, doesn't mean that you're not using activity but you're not using strain and force. You're just right. using, you know, a drum skin has tension. Instruments have tension to create sound. There needs to be tension, but not tightness in a way. It's semantics, it's words, isn't it? But, but how do we get the optimum sound? If you're playing a snare drum in a rock band, you can't go, <laughs> right? But you don't want to be going, whack either right so it's just finding that you, you you find the best drummers the ones with the most amazing fluent technique they've got the the whack there there's the strength there but it's not force and there's nothing grabbing and that's what we're after um again uh no i won't go into it it's all spoken about last night well in fact no this part wasn't i'm teaching another dystonia student uh, Ken, his name is, and he's happy for me to share his experiences. He used to learn off Claude Gordon. Uh, and after your question about the, the milk spout, am I, you know, coming in more? Uh, that's easier when I play higher. That's the whole point <laughs> is that it comes in in the arch tongue is what makes it easier. Awareness of it and recognizing if you start to engage and choke off and push. Um, so Claude Gordon of, of forever gone, he must have known about the lips and he did. And he had this inward movement with a forward motion. But he said to this student, Ken, who's 71 years old, he's had dystonia for 20 years. Um, oh, no, Claude used to talk to me about that. But he goes, it's so hard to explain. I'm going to stop using it. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Wow. And then a couple of guys last night pulled out one of Claude's early books and he's got the circle with arrows going come inwards right but the second i've got a student that i teach on fridays is also ex claude gordon and by the time he was learning off claude claude was saying forget the lips tongue arch tongue position forget the lips right mm. so it's really interesting because i for someone who was so into teaching so influential I'm like, there's no way that he wasn't aware of what the mouth was doing. There's no way. It's impossible. So what, he's either been mistranslated over the years or something's happened and I've got it straight. I've got the assignments. 
that these guys used to get handwritten from Claude Gordon. He saved my career, Claude Gordon. Brass playing so harder than deep breathing. I, I had a, I was on the verge of quitting. This is a true story. I cannot quit until I've read that book. There's a book out there that says brass playing is no harder than deep breathing. And I've been work playing for 15 years and hating it, but I haven't read that book. Maybe I'm missing some information. And that's where for a while and back in, if you got the original print of my first book, I was all on the arch tongue, faster air, play higher psychology, because that's all I knew until I was introduced to more compelling evidence. <laughs> right? So it's really interesting. But also what, what Ken was also struggling with, and the one that I can't get my head around is that chest up, chest up, chest up. I, I can't buy into it. I can't because I'm not sitting here talking to you like this, and I haven't for the last 40 minutes. Dolly Parton breath. <laughs> That's what they refer to it at times, right? Why? That, to me, the way that it's done is, and it's still being taught, is encouraging the activation of unnecessary uh, musculature. And so what this guy, oh, Ken, it was having trouble with, also on top of the dystonia, was tightness, choking and stuff. Like rotator cuff in the shoulder, elbow, just do that. He felt like he wasn't picking up the instrument because <laughs> he was doing nothing. He's doing heaps, but not doing all this. So I'm happy to have this conversation with anyone. And, and uh, I got sent a video recently. And whilst a lot of it I actually really liked, and this is someone who's been a bit anti my teaching, but seems to be on board now, which is nice, but it still had elements of the, the chest out approach. Uh, so once we dropped that down, uh, everything opened up. And basically what I'm teaching him is so different. This is Ken, the dystonia student, is so far removed from the way that he'd been taught that there's no reactions happening. It's only when he thinks about playing that the reactions will start. But when we stay conscious and just stay focused on every single element that we glow, we go through like a really, really slow clock, <laughs> it won't trigger because he, he just doesn't have that wiring. It's new concept of strangeness. Uh, Mike, is there anything that you'd like to, to add? Um, you'd be sitting there going, why is he talking to me? I'm just fascinated in your, your past, you're coming back, you're developing. Last time I heard you, I, I have no words. I'm just sitting there <laughs> grinning like a, like a Cheshire cat. So, um, so Mike, Mike, uh, sorry, sorry, Mike, uh, that uh, Mike up in the green shirt, there's two, there's two Michaels. My, my mistake. Okay. Thank you. Greg. Hey, <laughs> How are you, buddy? I'm good. How's it coming along? I, I'm having a ball. Uh, I mean, every day is like Christmas for a kid. I've been saying that since I started this course, you know. Um, I, uh, I find out new things almost on a daily basis. You know, I pick up uh, a, a lot. Uh, one of the things that I would like to ask, and, and, and I, I think I already know the answer to it, but, um, you know, when you, you uh, I, uh, and I've told you this, when, when I was with uh, other, uh, other uh, instructors, they would talk about the corners being out here, uh, and I didn't totally abandon that uh, when I started with you, because it's part of your, you know, physiological makeup, you got to have those. Yeah. Uh, work uh but when when you're when you're bringing in and i've always been that school where the corners come in uh however with roy stevens it was a little different uh, you know you were talking about pressure the mouthpiece pressure uh roy was of the school that you know when you're going up uh, you have a couple of ways to get there 
One is mouthpiece pressure. You know, you bring in the mouth, but there's a point of no return. Once you get through the chops, you're done. So you yeah. got to know when to stop too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but my 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 question yeah, you, on, your on dentist, your dentist will probably tell that tell you your dentist will tell you that when you've gone too far. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Sometimes you need the rattling, but um, <laughs> when you're bringing your chops in to to raise the pitch, uh, it it's a it's almost to me anyway a, a natural occurrence for the the lips to almost perch out the milk spout actually goes into the mouthpiece more yep, yep. but there i think that there's and this is the part that i really have to start figuring out especially when i'm playing around and i go up higher yep. uh, you know meaning into the altissimo range it, um, sometimes it, it, it goes too far yep and then you it, it's like a half an air ball you yep. know yep you're not getting a full sound. You're not getting the sound. Sometimes it just it yep. comes apart. Yep. Uh, sometimes it will happen even in the lower register if it's too too much. So I'm yep. trying to find that sweet spot. You know, uh, as far as everything else goes, I've been working on, uh, like you said, I want you to get into the right side of the brain because uh, the left side, I've been, I've been really uh, plugging away at that for the last year. Yep. And uh, I think I really do understand, you know, uh, and, and understand the feeling uh, when it's right, for sure. Yep. Um, and like you said, you know, one minute you're, you're playing and it's all right. The next minute, you know, you put the, the mouthpiece up to your chops and you go, huh? Yeah. That doesn't yeah. feel like, what am I doing with this thing in my face? I don't even know what it's doing. Yeah. Um, but I've learned to work past that. Like this today, today when I woke up, you know, and then I and I started playing uh, this morning. Um, it my my low C is always there now. It's oh. always there. And what I do now is I use that as my reference for every other note that's up there. Is so every what I'm trying to do this. Is everyone listening to this? That is so important. It's no RAM. It's part of who you are. The entire blooming first part of the whole course is about exactly what you just said, is to find it, make it repeatable to the point where you don't have to think about it and everything gets built on that. You've just said exactly what I'm trying to get across. That's awesome. Well done. Thanks. Sorry, keep going. I just interrupted you. <clears throat> no, that's, that's it's uh it, it it really comes down to you know being patient and kind to yourself too mm -hmm. with this whole thing. I mean, we as trumpet players, I think every one of us have beat us up ourselves up. We're not really kind to ourselves because let's face it, when we first got our instrument back in whenever it was for everybody. Um, what did you get? You got criticized, basically. You never was told uh, that, oh, that was the way to go. That's the way. No, no, don't do this. Do this. Don't do that. Do this. Mm -hmm. And I don't care who you, you played with. And I, I, I've told you, I, I, I've played with some important amateur experts. Uh, mm -hmm. And they did teach me some things. However, I, there were a lot of blank spot, spots that I needed to know yeah. to make it happen the way I want to play. And but that, that hasn't happened until I got into Winwood. Awesome. Um, I, I, uh, I know that this works because, and, and I'm not saying I'm a polished player at this point. I'm not. I'm not even the player I was before I quit 40 years ago, yep. you know, 35 years ago. Um, but I think that I'm close. And yep. like I said to you the last time we had a lesson together, what my goals are, you know, like a lot of you, you guys up, up, up there, I, I, I sit here and I envy you because you're playing. You're playing in a group and, you know, to be perfectly honest, that takes, that takes guts when you're, when you're trying to improve your chops. 
when I was playing back in the day and I started with Carmine and Roy Stevens and those guys, to make that transition and play, to me, it was like, it, I just couldn't do it. Could yep. not do it. Yep. It was such a drastic uh, change yep. uh, in so many ways. So yeah. I got to the point, you know, and I don't, I, I'm, I don't know how the other guys are. And I, I've, read, I've read on the forum, you know, people that are come back, you know, after 10, 15, 20 years, whatever, uh, to, to put the horn down permanently was not an easy choice. Yeah, right. But I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't live with it. Yeah. I couldn't live with it more. So How now, that? yeah. Yeah. So for, for, for me, anyway, uh, one of the, the most important lessons that I've learned from you and from your system is to be kind and get rid of the ego. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to go. Yeah. It's got to go. Every yeah. day is a good day. Right. Every single day is a good day. Uh, some are better than others <laughs> and better right. fun. Uh, yeah. But every day is a good day. So like I said, this morning, I started out and I, I start out like, uh, I, I hope everybody does. Uh, you know, you start out in Largo and, and uh, you do your whole tones and you, you uh, then you get into the lower parts of the singing ski series to set yourself up. And then I'll put the one down for a half an hour and I come back and I'll do one of the moderato, you know, one of the andante into the moderatos uh, that are connected. Uh, so, and then I'll, uh, I'm still working on Allegro. I'm not gonna move forward until- Oh my. <laughs> until that opens up a little more. It, it's there, I mean, it's coming. It's definitely coming along. Yeah. Um, but I feel like you know another month or two. If it if it's three, I don't I don't care. I don't yeah. care what it is, you know, because uh, I'm fortunate. I'm very fortunate. At first, I got a second chance. Second, I met you, and no, you. third, I don't have to make money yet to do this. Sure, you know, and and I, to put food on the table for my family, I don't need to do that anymore. Yeah. And so that is I can. Thing. That's huge. That's a yeah. huge advantage. So mm -hmm. I feel for Mike, you know, for him making changes or or anybody that's out there playing. Uh, I'm hoping that, you know, in the next six months or so or whatever it is, uh, I'm shooting for maybe spring, United States, New York spring. <laughs> um, I'm hoping to, you know, maybe start playing in, a, in a, any band. I don't care where awesome. it is or what right. it is. I just want to play. You know, so I've been I've been working on the sound and, and uh, opening it up, and I've noticed a few things by doing switching over to the right side, yeah. you know, and listening to that. And as you know, I I wear hearing aids, so it's it's not easy for me to hear. Yeah. Uh, even an instrument as loud as a trumpet, it's yeah. not easy because I'm behind the bell. Yeah. And so I have. I have to, I bounce it off a wall. Sometimes I'll, I'll play into a desk or whatever it is that I need to, to find the sound. But yep. the feelings, I think it's almost as important as to not recognizing the sound. Absolutely. When I, sound, when I sound open, everything is free. Everything is free and open. So it's yeah. a feeling, it's a sensation that you get and you recognize, and that's really what I've been working on to bring my, uh, bring that open. You know, you get those days, like you were talking earlier, where everything clicks. Yep. And I can go all the way up to a, a double C, and it'll it'll be a nice. I don't normally do that. I'll yep. get into more. Of, I like to be in a playable range, you know, and to me. Yep. What I want as a playable range would be something up to a double C. You know, sure. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to compromise that. So yep. uh, a G below double C uh, on a good day, I don't even feel like I'm the one that's playing. Sure, there it is. I, You've that's just a new, that's a, yeah, that's a new experience for me. I mean, I, I 
used to, I used to have that. I had I had a G and a, and a, and a uh, above IC, but I had to work like a crazy man to get it, yeah. and I couldn't do it all by. Yeah, I can't. So for me, I, it's almost like I, I don't even understand how I just did that. You know, when when you play a note like that. Yeah. Uh, so my recognition for the, the the notes that are up there, and I I, I don't remember when it was. I read it on the forum, a guy, uh, some guy was talking about, you know, his playable range is only into where he is on the course. And I, I, I thought about that and I said, well, you're lucky. If your playable range is wherever you are on the course, that's great. Yeah. Because it, what happens, it seems what happens is every time you, you're, you're a uh, you accomplish a particular note in your range and it becomes normal for you to play that note the way you would like to play efficiently. Yep. You're able to play higher. Yeah. You just have to let it go. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that, that's more psychological for me. And, and I've been trying to, to actually the, 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 uh, when I started the Allegro, the Allegro uh, series, which isn't terribly different from Moderato, but it, it's, it just raises you up another third. Right. You know, and that, that could be a killer, especially yep. when you're playing passively. Absolutely. Uh, but I found that, you know, when I'm choking off that top note, on passive air, by the time you get there, there's not much air left. Right. Um, I find that I try trying to to not use more more um, muscle tension or whatever you know when you're bringing your chops in. Trying to use less opens the node up. Absolutely. And, and, Absolutely. But that, that's yeah. what we're trying to learn is to do less because at the end of the day, the chops are strong enough. <clears throat> I said last night, we're not learning to, we don't need strength. There's conditioning required, of course, but we're learning to let go. We overdo it. We over compress in the body. We over pinch in the chops. We're learning what to let go of to make it easier. Right. And so your your familiarity with with like you've got the low C which is gold, the uh, going up each harmonic as you just said that there is a point where passive becomes no notes. I can't play the next note. Will not speak. Why? Because we've grabbed too much, we've pinched too much. That's the whole purpose of the the Siggy C series. Using the passive energy is to allow the oscillator to start to learn to respond to less pressure which means that the sides of the mouth and the aperture corners need to be more refined you've got it on your low c your g will come then your middle c then your e then your g then your high b flat and your c and not everyone wants to play double c's it's not about that you don't have to but for those that do there's nothing more frustrating than seeing people that can play all over the horn and you're practicing your backside off and you're not getting there i lived it for years every single book i would open do some exercises, do some exercises. All of a sudden, the next page has got stuff going up to, you know, the stratosphere. I'm like, oh, I can't do that. Why can't I do that? The whole course here is based on frustration of all the different methods that I did that all of a sudden you turn a page and there's something you couldn't do. Why can't I do it? What am I doing wrong? Well, let's pull the whole damn thing apart. Let's do some reverse engineering, right? Let's do nothing. <laughs> Right, let's wake up. Let's bloom and let go of the face. Let go of the body. Don't even move the mouth. Energize the lungs. Relax. Oh, there's energy there. Oh, I wonder how much energy there is. Well, it turns out. I actually just started thinking about the the plastic, the chopper chop sticks that I, I put in the wind pack. But I used to do a lot with them, and I haven't done much with them. But I might bring them back a bit. You've got your lollipop stick, which is white. And it's got a hole down the middle. And you take a breath and relax the body completely without falling over. 
and the pressure of that air coming through this tiny little hole could blow out a match easily, right? So I used to practice going like really softly with a match and not blow it out and see the, 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 the match flicker, sorry, the flame on the match just flicker. Then I'd put this plastic tubing, take a breath and relax the body, and the air's going through there, and you put the match in front of it, and it obliterates the flame. You go, well, okay, so there's a lot of energy there. So let's not, let's just, con let's use that. And so my whole 1% rule was how much sound, just the fascination, how much sound can I make with no work? And it turns out, beside, you know, oh, I'll pick up this, this flugel just appeared from somewhere. It's old and hasn't been played for years. But energize the lungs and relax. That's loud if you let the energy out and the corners know where to grab on the mouthpiece. The corners. There is no pinch down. I'm, I'm not going to go down this path because you're all, I'm sure, totally sick of it. But the, the what we're aiming, no pinch like I, like I used to do. Yes, as we're getting higher, that inward feeling is there, but I don't spend much attention or time talking about that top lip coming back in because as soon as we start to think about that top lip, it's going to be an engagement and a grab down. And that's why I'm constantly V for victory, X marks the spot, you know, aperture corners, milk spout. It's all about those, what part of, because we can all agree that the lips touch the mouthpiece. So then we've got the the where the lips join that's kind of important according to you know mr bernoulli the top lip no go zone don't think about it because you're going to pinch it down as soon as you do the bottom lip yeah u shape you've seen books i can't remember which one it might be a caruso thing or something where there's pictures of a u and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller i get that and then when you think about that feeling why am I going no, to develop that feeling of the U shape in the bottom lip? Then please watch last night. We spoke about this quite a lot, the birth of pedal tones and from the no note to the low note. And then once you find that, um, was it, it might've even been Harjo saying it, that once you've got that setting, um, flicking up through the different harmonics, like Mike, you're just saying you've played G's and it feels like you, you're not doing anything because the corners are perfectly grabbed on the rim for that harmonic, for that overtone that you're wanting to produce on the horn. They're set correctly. The milk spout's not hindering the airflow and there's basically no top lip, right? Now my trumpet's down in the car. <laughs> I forgot to bring it out. You're just doing a trumpet masterclass to people around the planet and you leave your trumpet in your car. Sometimes me not so smart, but I have this old flugelhorn, right? There's the pedal C we were talking about last night. Easy on flugel because of the size of the bell. Not easy on trumpet. It's like playing an E with no valve. Pedal C doesn't exist on the trumpet. Um, and I also mentioned last night, the pedal C is easy on this, but try and play a pedal F on flugelhorn. It's almost impossible, <laughs> right? But what this whole thing is, is energizing the body. What little amount of work can I do? 1% rule, what can I let go of? Not what can I do? And all the teaching everywhere, you see it everywhere. More air, do more. Hold hold your body, lift up, engage muscles. What have those muscles got to do with energizing the air that's in here? And <laughs> when you experience that passive reduction of the body and see the power that's in that, play with that, play like that. And it's so contrary to people's understandings of how to play that I spend most of my time working on people's belief systems on the understanding of how it works because you can google how to play trumpet 
and you'll find a thousand videos on pleasure lips, blow harder to play higher. There was a video put out recently and I actually emailed the guy and I'm going to have to do a private support group. This is what's out there. This is the problem. Basically, the name of the video is don't tighten your lips to play higher. Arch your tongue and blow faster. No. No, that's absolutely, completely and utterly wrong. Now, the thing with this guy is uh, he'd done a video on the diaphragm. And he got that wrong. But he came out a couple of weeks later and lo and behold, he had a balloon and was demonstrating a balloon. So I don't know whether someone had possibly suggested, oh, check this out. Look what a balloon does. And he got back with a balloon and he said, you know, I said this stuff a few weeks ago. Well, I got it wrong and I'd like to. Um, so kudos, so much credit to the guy for doing that. I had this understanding of the way that the diaphragm works. Turns out it doesn't work like that. And this is what's going on. I'm like, oh, dude, legend. The toughest thing to do is admit you're wrong because there's so much ego in this game. And I've learned a lot of cool stuff from being wrong and people going, Greg, I'd get you to consider. I go, I oh, will consider it. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, oh I was wrong. Hello. My, um, Dave Weckl, famous drummer, seven videos, instructional videos over many years, and then came out on his eighth video and said, forget everything I've ever taught you. There's a better way. One of my favorite stories. How good is that? It's not about ego. It's about trying to help and share the best information you've got. And if you're going to do something different, embrace it. Oh, is it even better? Way? This way was great, but there's even a better way. How good is that? A lot of people won't do that. Anyway, so I've emailed this guy and said, look, I'll get you to consider because you're obviously passionate about teaching. He's in New York and he runs a school. So he's got a lot of exposure. I would get you to consider, I can't say it more politely, nicely. And obviously I love teaching and learning. And so does this guy. But the information that he's saying is just wrong and it's damaging. And I haven't heard back, right? So that's okay. But it needs to be addressed because when when there is so, there's so many frustrated players. Why? I understand why. I was the same, <laughs> right? Until I've just gone, my threshold is just, no, no, there's something wrong here. I'm being told something and I'm trying to do it and it's not working. For me, the story that just keeps coming into my head, you're a Formula One driver and you're going down the straight and then at the end of the straight, you've got to turn right. And someone's saying, right, you want to turn right? Greg, get put your foot on the throttle, on the accelerator. And you keep crashing. I'm not turning. No, 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 just put your foot on the accelerator. That's the, how to do it. Right? We're being told to blow faster, more energy. Engage the body, push. With no focus here, here's your steering wheel. Use the right bit. Don't blow harder and change. Don't speed up. Just use your steering wheel and you'll turn. The psychology is wrong, right? So anyway, this is this will this is what I'm spending my time doing. And you guys, you know, you're getting it. It's great. And Mike, you know, thank you for sharing. Um, it's it's um, your awareness of this shape thing because you you said the words i don't know how i did that you understand physics the, the physics of why it worked but you can't recall the sensation of it because you didn't try and do it your intention wasn't i'm going to do this you had a post experience of that just happened or what happened if you tried to do it again all oh, the wheels would fall off because everything would grab and you'd push that's the whole coffee moment experience of there it is that's what i wanted I did this huge set of drills that got me to that moment, like with my um, Wellsy. Can I call you Wellsy? <laughs> yeah, with Wellsy last week, um, we went through a, an hour and a half routine. Uh, all, all, all the stuff. And then right at the very end, oh, just have a crack at it. I know that's not the right excerpt, but 
I don't know how I did that, but it worked. I understand it. Then the replication will come. Um, thanks, everyone, for this session. It was really encouraging me to keep fighting and stay playing. Janet, you ain't going anywhere. I will not allow you to part ways. We need to, you've heard Mike talk. I've found my low C. Let's get that. And let's get belief and confidence that it's there all the time. It's the whole one plus one thing. What's one plus one? Two. Until we find it, it's one plus one equals three equals four. Then it gets it right. Then it forgets it. Then it gets it right. Then it forgets it. Good days, bad days. There are no bad days. There are no bad days, right? As Mike said, we we talk to ourselves often. You'd never speak to somebody else like it. You'd never say the things that you say to yourself to anyone else. That's how harsh we can be with ourselves sometimes. It's not healthy. Um, so a, a bad day isn't a backward step. A bad day is part of the learning process that will be followed by a good day at some stage. A bad day is not a backward step, right? So we just need to find what we can do. I've only said it 10 million times. What can we do? What can we kind of do? What can't we do? You need to find what you can do. And that can do will turn into a low C. And it will turn into a middle G. And it will turn into a middle C. And it will turn into a... And there's no relying on favourable conditions. It's just so wired that you can't not do it, right? Um, thank you, guys. Um, please stay in touch. Keep that forum pumping. The Windworks Trumpet Academy got born yesterday, so we're going to do a new logo. It's a course. It's not a book or a bunch of exercises. It's an experience, a learning experience. And it's only in its early days, but it's very exciting because if I didn't make changes to the way that I was doing things, I would have got mad and given up. So it's got to keep moving forward. Um, so thank you. I learn as much from you guys as hopefully you get from what I've got to share. And John, I'll see you on Monday. Uh, Harjo, I'll be in touch. Mike, keep going, mate. It's awesome to see you. Greg. Talk soon. Wellsy, uh, William, I didn't get to say good day, but um, hello, hello, mate. That's dedication, my friend. <laughs> Just pulling up those little lights. But I did, I did have an interesting moment this week because I was mucking around with the trumpet and um, and I'm playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and uh, uh, Aura Lee. And I found this, what you were talking about, all of a sudden, the sound just got bigger and it got easier. And I thought, oh, this must be the moment he's talking about this, this vibration or this harmonic and the, and the, and this, and when I play that, the C, the C could go really difficult when I'm playing through, because I can't play the whole damn song. And I'm thinking, oh, probably because I need to take a breath in between. Um, but at some point, I actually found that the note actually resonates, like you're saying, and it just gets bigger. The sound just gets bigger all of a sudden. The, ah, that must be what he's talking about. A beautiful win-win, people. <laughs> That's great. Great, William. Awesome. Just keep doing it. And then when you try to replicate it, it might completely disapear. That's uh, fine. It's- that's 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 the frustrating bit. You come through once, and it's 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 like oh, it's so magical. You can do it. Let's do it again. Nah, yeah, nah, gone. And, and everyone for the laughing. next ten minutes, just going, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, you know? that's but, it. Uh, you know, yeah. But that's so the I, I then I then I just get flipping with it, and I just and then just let the lips go loose, and 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 then suddenly it appears again. So I've gotten to a point where I used to actually what I shouldn't tell tell you people, but I actually got so frustrated. I used to blow the bejesus through that through that little hole. But you know, some days I thought, oh, I better forget it. They walk away, yep. come back ten minutes later, and it's sort of getting a bit better in the in the thing that oh, if it's gone, then just muck around with it, and then and somehow it disappears again. I thought, and I'm slowly getting to a point. Okay, you know, low, uh, lips behind the teeth, and and sort of it's a bit more of a growing awareness. Sure. And I'm trying to go through a set of um, motions set of steps you know take the deep breath uh milk spout and and trying to and then trying to set the reset the platform again and then try playing again yep that's it and 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 believe it or not when you get that moment of you want to throw the instrument that's a release of 
acetylcholine and epinephrine are all these brain chemicals, then that means you're frustrated. It's telling the brain there's something wrong. Then all of a sudden you keep doing it and you eventually find it that releases dopamine and sends a message to the brain. There it is. Do yeah, that. Yeah. And that too much that, Andrew Huberman. You are. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's exactly him. That's where I'm learning this stuff. From. Oh, it's amazing. The amount of stuff that process. I'm learning from him as well, but it takes a long two, three hour videos. Crazy. Right. <laughs> Love it. Uh, well done. Much. Keep keep working, buddy. All the best and well done. I, I've actually given a lesson to a guy. I kid you not, one day, a Skype lesson, and he gets on and he's in the car. And I'm like, oh, mate, you know, if, you, if you're not ready, you wait until you get to your whatever. He goes, no, 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 no. I'm at work. I'm, my car's outside. I'm just using my work's Wi-Fi. And I mean, had his lesson in his car. Oh, I've seen it all. Hilarious. <clears throat> Have a great week, folks. Uh, thank you again. See you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.